Hello, hello, and welcome to Inspirations, where you can find encouragement to inspire our life. This is Dana Susan Beasley of Angel Arts Doctors, and today I'm continuing my series called You Are a Blooming Original. And I'm going to read from Joshua 23, 10 through 16 in the New American Standard Bible. Now, it came about after many days, when the Lord had given rest to Israel from all their enemies on every side, and Joshua was was old, advanced in years, that Joshua called for all Israel, for their elders and their heads and their judges and their officers, and said to them, I am old, advanced in years, and you have seen all that the Lord your God has done to all these nations because of you, for the Lord your God is he who has been fighting for you. See, I have apportioned to you these nations, these nations which remain as inheritance, as an inheritance for your tribes, with all the nations which I have cut off from the Jordan even to the great sea, toward the setting of the sun. The Lord your God, He will thrust them out from before you and drive them from before you, and you will possess their land just as the Lord your God promised you. Be very firm then to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses so that you may not turn aside from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you will not associate with these nations, these which remain among you, or mention the name of their gods, or make anyone swear by them, or serve them, or bow down to them. But you are to cling to the Lord your God as you have done to this day. The Lord has driven out great and strong nations from before you, and as for you, no man has stood before you to this day. One of your men puts to flight a thousand, For the Lord your God is he who fights for you, just as he promised you. So, take diligent heed to yourselves to love the Lord your God. For, if you ever go back and cling to the rest of their nations, these which remain among you and intermarry with them, so that you associate with them and they with you, know with certainty that the Lord your God will not continue to drive these nations out from before you, but they will be a snare and a trap to you, and a whip on your sides and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from off this good land which the Lord your God has given you. Now behold, today I am going the way of all the earth, and you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one word of all the good words which the Lord your God spoke concerning you has failed. All have been fulfilled for you, not one of them has failed. It shall come about that just as all the good words which the Lord your God spoke to you have come upon you, so the Lord will bring upon you all the threats until he has destroyed you from off this good land which the Lord your God has given you. When you transgress the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and go and serve other gods and bow down to them, then the anger of the Lord will burn against you, and you will perish quickly from off the good land which he has given you. Wow, that is a powerful passage. So what is that saying to us in our present circumstances? And to me, this is what it's saying. You may relate to this. You may have a different interpretation, but here's what it's saying to me, and I encourage you with these words, loving the Lord my God with all my heart, that is the key to victory, to be able to chase thousands away, in other words, to stand against mountains, to stand against the challenges in our lives, and this is a huge challenge we face right now with this coronavirus and this seeming takeover, in my mind anyway, and I know in the minds of others, of Satan and this world and all the governing authorities where we are prisons in our own house, it seems like. And we are, in fact. But God does not fail. His promises do not fail. And honestly, I got really tired or I got really scared tonight just before I was recording this podcast. I got very scared that all the promises that God gave me were just going to go nowhere, that everything that I've done up until this point, all the hard work, all the dreams, all the prayers, all the promises were just going to fail. So hearing this was very comforting to me. But if I come... If I become ensnared by the world, there are consequences. And I will tell you, we are there. We are experiencing the consequences of idolatry in Christians. 
the complacency, the letting go of things like prayer. I mentioned in another podcast how years ago I saw Christian groups and churches just relegating prayer to something very unimportant. And to me, what's going on right now, to me that's a result. It's a consequence. Consequence. He disciplines as a loving father disciplines, letting me feel pain. We all feel pain right now because of what's going on. But he allowed this so that we would grow. Think about it. When you grow up and when you're in that growth process, you literally have growing process, growing pains as a young person. Growing, whether it's muscles or whether it's your faith, it is a painful process because that's the only way that you can build that muscle. Because loving Him with all our hearts is the most important pursuit of our lives. This earth is going to pass away and we will be with God And that really is all that matters. So how can we respond? To love God, we need... We need to put away all those things that entangle us. And what a perfect week to do that. It's Passover. Just quote-unquote coincidentally, my family and I are going to celebrate Passover for the first time ever. I've been reading about it. And here's the deal. So, the night before Passover, you're supposed to go through your house and get rid of all the leaven. And you have this fun game where you find this bread. And I haven't quite figured it all out. But the point is that you're to find this leaven which is sin, and get rid of it and throw it away or even burn it. And that's what we need to do this week especially. And so what is it that you can especially do without this week? You know, one of the things I think of is TV. You know, instead of watching the TV programs that I'm used to, I'm going to try my best to listen to music or watch something uplifting. So I'm going to work on that. You know, that's just one little example. And what are those what are those things that are preventing you from fully engaging in your walk with Christ or that are becoming idols? For me, it's scrolling in Facebook. It's really easy for me to spend a lot of time in Facebook scrolling through and and then lately it's been very detrimental because it's so full of doom and gloom. So I need to cut back on that. So just some ideas of what you can do this week. So let me pray. Let us pray. Lord, help us to diligently diligently seek to love you, our Lord, our God. Now, if you have been encouraged by this podcast, please like and share, follow. Maybe even it would be great if you comment about what is that thing that you need to give up for God. Just write that in your comments. That would be great. And if you have liked this episode and and what we stand for, then please go to our website, angelarts.biz, and see what resources and tools and product services that we have available to help you in your journey. So with that, I'm going to leave you with my favorite blessing. Peter is very noisy tonight. (laughs) The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. This is Dana Susan Beasley of angelarts.biz. Together may we reach new heights in our lives and beyond.